The next function is the cosine function. Cosine function is used a lot, and in a lot of um, equations you end up with a cosine. Basically what happens is you uh, have a hypotenuse, or some object that's being, let's say, uh, we're hitting a ball, a golf ball, or something like that. It's traveling up in the air at some angle. Well, part of its velocity is traveling along the x-axis. Part of it's going in the y-axis, of course, it's going up in the air, and that's the sine function. Let's just deal with the cosine function. So somehow the relationship between the adjacent side of our triangle and the hypotenuse, um, the relationship between the adjacent side and the hypotenuse is called the cosine of the angle. So if you wanted to know the angle and you knew the hypotenuse and the adjacent or the x-axis, a simple relationship would tell you the cosine of the angle and then the angle itself would be equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse and then you would take that to the uh, inverse cosine. I'm trying to fit it all in here. What is more often the case is that you want to know what the adjacent side is. And uh, we've got the relationship, you've got the hypotenuse and the angle, and you want to know what the x component or the x axis or the adjacent side of that triangle is equal to. And so if you do your algebra, if the cosine of the angle is equal to the x component divided by the hypotenuse, then the x component is equal to the cosine of the angle times the hypotenuse. So oftentimes, if we were dealing with velocity, it would be velocity in the x direction is equal to the cosine theta times the actual velocity of the object. So this is used quite frequently, the cosine of the angle. Uh, pretty straightforward. So let's assume we've got a velocity of 20 meters per second. It's launched at an angle of 30 degrees. What is the horizontal velocity? What velocity is it traveling along the x-axis? So if the cosine of the angle is adjacent over hypotenuse, then the adjacent must equal the cosine of the angle times the hypotenuse. So the x-axis velocity would be equal to the cosine of 30 times 20 meters per second. So we turn on our calculator. Uh, I like to hit cosine 30 and with the fancy calculators you hit the cosine first and then 30 and I hit equals, though you don't have to, times 20 and it tells me that the value is 17.5 or 3.2. So the velocity in the x-axis is 17.32. The units come down as meters per second. So that would be the velocity in the x-axis. Relatively straightforward to calculate. Another type of problem is one in which we have a horizontal distance, some x distance, that's traveled by an object that's launched in the air at a given angle. So for instance, if it goes 40 meters in 4 seconds, so the x distance is 40 meters, the time is uh, 4 seconds. We want to know the actual velocity, let's say it's launched again at 30 degrees. What's the actual velocity of the object that was launched? Well, we know the x velocity, because we can say velocity in the x direction is equal to the distance it travels divided by the time. So 40 meters divided by 4 seconds gives us a velocity in the x-axis of 4 meters per second. So now to find the hypotenuse, or the actual velocity, we'd say the cosine of our angle is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse, so the actual velocity, would be equal to the x velocity divided by the cosine of the angle, which turns into 4 meters per second divided by the cosine of 30 degrees. And the units, once again, will stay as meters per second. And we can punch that into our calculator as 4 
divided by I like to use parentheses. Parentheses kind of isolate your order of operation to make sure you're doing everything in the proper order. So I do parentheses cosine 30. When I hit equals, I come up with 4.6. So my actual velocity would be equal to 4.6 meters per second. So given the x velocity and the angle, I can find the actual velocity. In this case, given the x distance in time, I can find the actual velocity. Of course, there's always the event where you know the actual velocity. Or anything. This could be a force or any other uh, vector. And you know the x component of that. And you're looking for the angle. So once again, the cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And if you want the actual angle, then you would have to take the inverse cosine of both sides. So given some value of uh, uh, 4 meters per second, and uh, let's say 4.6 meters per second, you could easily find this so that the angle would be equal to 4 meters per second divided by 4.6 meters per second. The units will cancel out. 4 divided by 4.6 is 0.869. Keep in mind we have to take the inverse cosine of that to actually get the angle. So the angle would be equal to, now I've got this value on my calculator, so I take inverse cosine and then I just want the answer and if I take inverse and I hit the answer button, it saves me having to type in the whole number again because that number was the whole ratio with all of these digits was the last thing on my calculator. So I take inverse cosine of the last answer on my calculator, it enters, and it tells me my angle is 29.59 degrees. And if I had uh, used uh, 4.6 with all of its decimals that we got from the previous problem, we would have ended up with a perfect 30 degrees. Obviously, when you do problems, you're allowed a little bit of room there for significant figures.